Hey everyone, welcome back. I've got a really exciting topic today I wanna to share with you, and that is the architecture of your perfect day. One of the most common challenges I hear from grads is, I don't have enough time in the day. I can't get enough done. I feel like my back's always against the wall. I'm panicking, and, and I feel so inefficient compared to everybody else. Well, look, I wanna take a step back and have you think about how you structure your day. Odds are, you may never even come up with a strategy or thought about how you structure your day and what your perfect day as a graduate student might look like. You know, having worked with hundreds and thousands of graduate students, no exaggeration in my time as a professor at Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, and now University of Baconia Milan, as a professor, I've learned there are some certain things that you can do to really get yourself in the zone, achieve flow, and get the most out of your day. So let's dive in, and as ever guys, this is YouTube, I've got a secret tip for you at the end of the video, you're not gonna wanna miss it because it's one of those little hacks that's gonna really open up your productivity that you can implement tomorrow. Now, too many students I know, first thing in the morning, what, what's the first thing they do? Uh, first thing they do is you might roll out of bed and boom, reach to the cell phone. What you're doing is, oh, I'm checking my messages, I'm checking my Facebook, I'm checking my email, and it puts you on the back foot into a re reactive mode. And I bet this has happened to many of you. you. You check your phone, you check your mail, and you're immediately ah, pulling your hair out, think you've gotta respond, oh, I've gotta do this, gotta do that. And instead, I want you to practice what I call the no social rule. You, know, you might start with a no social for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and upgrade to an hour, which is what I prefer to do. Um, and really, no socials when you wake up. Because I want you to be on the front foot taking the day uh, you know, under your control and not being in a reactive mode, but a proactive mode, setting in this time your, uh, your, your intention for the day, what you need to accomplish, your main goals, so, so that you are controlling your social media, your social media is not controlling you. Okay, step two. One of the important things that, that is really essential right, in grad school, and really with any career, is to practice gratitude. Grad school is a long slog, and it's very easy to feel beaten down, and uh, my experiment's not working, I feel stuck on my writing, ah, uh, my supervisor's not answering me. We also need to take a moment in time and remember what we're thankful for. Be proud of yourself for, for the journey that you're making, that others have been too afraid to do. And in grad school, it really is a long, hard journey where you're stretching yourself and pushing yourself to the limits. So take a moment and remember every day what you're grateful for, because you do need it just for your own well-being uh, to balance out a lot of the difficulty, challenge, and negativity that you can, and many grads, do face uh, on a daily basis. Okay, at this point, you're probably, depending on what time you woke up, you know, heading in into the office or lab, or whatever space that you're gonna do your work in, you wanna get yourself a routine. Just like any athlete, think of yourself as a mental athlete. You are trying to produce and be your best. And you need a routine to make sure you get in the zone. The first component of your time at, at work, um, some people really wanna go in and, and manage emails and get other things off their desk, but that can also pull you into reactive mode. The way I want you to think about your day is that it's organized into a series of blocks. So your morning, which we've just covered, that was actually block one. Now, when you're getting into the office, uh, in the next part of your day, that is block two. Then, uh, after lunch, the afternoon, uh, the early part of the day, that is block three, uh, where then probably after that, you'll be going home, have dinner, uh, and getting yourself ready for bed the next day, that's block four. So really, out of these four blocks, I wanna make sure that you find two blocks, or at the very least one, in which you can do deep work. And deep work um, is really just what it sounds. It's that time where you can really engage. And maybe that's making progress on your writing. Maybe that's making progress analyzing a data set. Maybe that's doing experiments. But I, you'll know it's deep work because it's not something like checking an email that you can do in five minutes. It's something you need to get into a zone and into a peak flow where you can really make progress. And you might notice on yourself a little bit of resistance at the beginning. And that's really normal when you're trying to get into deep work because it's hard. You're pushing yourself, you're really trying to concentrate. And you will find at the beginning of a deep work cycle, your mind wanting to go anywhere else, do anything but that deep work you're trying to do until you finally get pulled into it and then you want to be indistractable. Now, I like to factor in transitions. So at the end of this deep work, I like a transition and now is a really nice point as I'm kind of slowing out so I'm not kind of running, sprinting and then stop. 
immediately. I'm kind of kind of steep, slowly transitioning out, and that's when I might want to check email. I might be a little fatigued and tired at this point because I've just worked really hard, and I might take care of the more administrative tasks that are not going to be as cognitively demanding. They're not going to take as much of my intellectual resource that I have. Now, at this point, you've got your lunch. I want you to make sure you take a really good break. Do something that can, even for a moment, kind of disconnect your mind from this, this heavy lifting that you were just doing. So, uh, lunch with a friend. I've got friends who like to do a bit of stretching, yoga, or meditation. They find a spot in the office for that. Some people do a gym break over lunch. That's also fantastic. I don't know what that right thing is going to be for you, but uh, reflect and think about what can you do that even for a brief moment is just gonna take your mind off the millions of things you, you're doing. You wanna give those neural synapses time to recover so that they can fire and you can be optimal. Because after lunch, you're coming to your block number three. And this is the next time for deep work. And what I like here for this block of deep work is to do something uh, uh, integral. And what I mean by integral is you know, not try to break up deep work, say, okay, now I'm gonna do lab, I'm gonna do writing at the same time and try to shuffle many things. Because the reality is, as people, we're just not that great at multitasking. And there's frictions as you try to get into the zone for, for writing uh, and try to get into the zone for lab work, try to get in the zone for crunching data. Um, you know, we're just not that good at shifting from one thing to another. I mean, you can't beat friction. So uh, instead of trying to get better at multitasking, try to plan your day so that the different tasks you have to do, you can assign to a different deep work block. Okay, so now you're probably wrapping up your third block, which was your second time, ideally, of deep work. And uh, you're gonna be heading home and uh, transitioning into your evening. Now, this is again a point where I think it's really important to give yourself some nourishment to recover from, just like an athlete. Athletes did a lot of hard work and training. They need to nourish themselves to fuel their bodies to recover. You need to do the same thing. That can be sport, that can be time with family, friends, something that you find replenishes you, uh, not something that just siphons more of your energy away. And I think several of you will know that there are certain situations, environments you're in, that after work is more enervating than, than work itself. So you really want to think about this, this block of time that, that you've got as your kind of your me time um, and find little micro pleasures and things you can do for yourself to reward yourself for, for the hard work you just did. Um, and this is really important too because this kind of break I call activating. And you'll notice that some of your best ideas come not when you're sitting in front of a desk or in the lab, but actually when you're giving your subconscious room to breathe because it's continuing to churn in the background and that time you have in the shower or walking in the park can be where you get some of your best creativity. So you don't wanna lose that. So you need to make sure uh, you, you think about uh, using this time wisely for yourself and also for recovery and to maximize your creativity. And finally, as you've had dinner, maybe now you're coming to the end of your night, we wanna go back to where we started. And that is, once again, no social rule. I know some people uh, on their phones, they like to dim the lights uh, with hopes that that will help them sleep better. But really, the studies are pretty consistent that if you wanna look after your sleep hygiene, you need to disconnect from your socials and you need to disconnect from the phone. The more time, the better. Again, I want you to be the master of your social life and not be a slave to it like so many people are. So put down the phone, give yourself that time of being no social. The other thing that is really important in the night to do before you go to bed um, that I find incredibly helpful is not to end up like has happened to me so many times where you're up at night thinking, oh, I gotta do this tomorrow. And as you're trying to say, oh shoot, I forgot, I gotta do that tomorrow. Uh, no, you wanna get this under control and I even have a notebook next to the side of my bed where I simply write out my intention of what I need to do the next day. That simple process is as though the, the stress and anxiety and, and things that I have to do the next day have departed from me and I have divorced myself from them for that moment in time and I can sleep at ease. I sleep like a baby now because I know that I've got a plan for what I'm gonna do tomorrow and now is not the right time. Guys, don't beat yourself up if you're late at night thinking, oh, I can't sleep, now my next day is gonna be messed up. Ah, oh, look at the clock, I still can't sleep. Try some of these strategies. They may not work uh, right away, they take some practice because you've gotta establish a rhythm. And many of you may not have a rhythm or a structure to your day, and that's what this session on architecture of the perfect day is all about. I want you to think about what does your day currently look like? What would an ideal day be for you structured into these four blocks? 
which of these elements are you doing and which can you start to do right now? And I bet for many of you, the no social rule, gratitude, making that list and setting your intention for the next day are some things you can do right away. Finally, I promised a bonus tip. And this bonus tip is about what I call in-between spaces. And we all have certain in-between spaces in our lives that we may be able to use better than we currently do. And those can be great for handling some of those admin, email tasks, uh, things we've gotta do, life responsibilities that we always struggle to find time to get to. You don't wanna break up a deep workflow with some of these tasks and put yourself then on the back foot. All you know, right, getting into flow is hard, and your flow keeps getting disrupted, you're gonna be much less productive in the time you have. And we want you to be as productive as you can in as little time. And you'd be amazed, once you master getting deep work right, you can get 90% of what you need to do in a day in one block of deep work, if you can just master getting into it quickly. So what I like is the in-between spaces. Say in your commute to work, before you get into that deep work, or the commute away from work to lunch, or uh, going home. You know, For me, in Milan, that's sitting on the tram going to work. Um, think about these in-between spaces, and if you have a way that you can leverage them to do some reading, listen to a podcast, organize things in, in, in your life that you need to organize. Uh, for me today, it was calling the gardener and setting up an appointment to get that done. Um, guys, I want you to use those and leverage. Think about the in-between spaces you have in your life. How are you currently using them? And could you kind of recruit and mobilize that extra time out of your day that currently right now is dead time and make it activating to take one of those trivial admin tasks off your plate so you can get into deep work faster. Hey, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, let me know, comment below what you're doing and how you're doing implementing these practices to be more efficient and productive throughout your day. Let us know your best tips on how to structure your perfect day. And guys, if you want more of the productivity training I was mentioning to you, there's tons of value on this channel, but also come to my Facebook group, Fast Track Grad. You're gonna get exclusive content, master classes, direct access to me, including the opportunity to book uh, and apply for a one-to-one -one accelerator session with me, where we go deep together in just a short time to figure out how can we really leverage your day to maximize the productivity for you to do the things you need to do as a grad. All right, look forward to seeing you there.